And just a quick overview of our um, understanding is to do we really need to change the way we do things. And I know that you we always talk about, okay, so we're making this change, we're always in a path of improvement. So then we stop and think about why do we need to always have, you know, do we need to change? And this is a good depiction of why we need to change. If you look at 100 years from now, uh, you see those factory workers who are non-skilled workers in the assembly line, and the schools during that time needed workers. So they have created classrooms that look like this, where they're sitting in front of one teacher and basically presenting. Um, what we moved on, which the information is, when internet you know, first came out, then we talked about, okay, the information we need to uh, derive information and we have the computers uh, during that era. But let's talk about the 21st century. Right now, you all are in professional fields and you know that you need to be able to work as teams. Those students need to be able to work with each other. And so for that reason, we call that networking. We like them to work in groups. So uh, that's, what, that's what we need to do because at the end of the day, we want them to be able to work with the people in teams in different organizations. So I, I wanted to, the reason, again, just to bring my case is that the, um, there was a survey from the, the, according to the National Association of College and Employer, who did a survey with uh, hundreds and thousands of employers to see what do they really want? What, what is it that they want from the employees? And um, and when I when we when they did the survey, I have gotten this from the job outlook, and it says 80% of the students, sorry, 80% of the employers are looking for people who have leadership skills. 80%. So this was quite recent. It was last year. So imagine that. So they're not looking for not people who have content knowledge, but more of how are they able to um, take the initiative, be able to have that leadership skill. The next is the ability to work in teams. So 78% of them needs to be, are saying that they are, should be, they should be able to work in teams. Um, and the next is communication skills, whether it's verbal or written, which is about 70%. Work at least 65%, and I know you can't see that, that's what I'm reading to you. And then initiative is 62%, all the way down to organization abilities, which is like 48%. So this is out there on the internet. It's, it's there. It's a survey that was done. And we need to, as teachers, as leaders, learn that. So quickly, um, this is Tony Wagner. Dr. Tony Wagner is, has done the research globally in, in the world. And um, this book was, this book came out and really is an eye opener for educators. Uh, I've been in conferences that talks about this particular book and his research on what is the world looking at. So um, he had come up with seven survival skills. And I'm just going to quickly go through that. I know they're waiting. Um, so let's go back to that survival skills. Um, so, so quickly, critical thinking, collaboration, uh, critical thinking, problem solving. So math is not just memorizing rote learning, but being able to have that critical thinking. Collaboration, again, back to being able to talk and work among each other, agile and adaptability. They need to be adaptable. They, because things are moving so fast, they need to be able to work with that environment, um, initial entrepreneurship, um, effective written oral communication, and accessing, analyzing information, and curiosity, imagination. Those are the seven survival skills that we at Hagi School are taking to heart and using that information to present. So um, with that, I would like to uh, present Saba Askar, who's going to quickly talk about the puppy. Um, so just a few notes about why we do PDL at our school. Um, some parents feedback from what we've done that so far and what they liked about it. Um, these are just some of the comments. It's a great idea. Other schools are now starting this approach. 
Um, they like the experiment and integration of subjects because BBL um, includes the integration of subjects over uh, one project integrating a few different um, specialties such as science and writing, um, math here and there. Um, why PBL? A few important points about why we do PBL at our school is that it makes school more engaging for students. Um, it improves learning and motivation because when, if project-based learning is done properly, um, students are given a role in what they're studying, a, a real-world role, such as scientists or engineers, um, and it improves their motivation in what they're learning. Um, it builds success skills for college, career, and life, just as Ms. Ezra mentioned. Helps us also address the educational standards because we can include our standards into the projects um, across curriculum. It provides opportunities for students to use technology and become more independent on technology. Also, it um, connects the students with communities and the real world. Um, Project-based learning includes deep critical thinking, through presenting real world, real world questions, authentic pride projects that lead to deeper learning. This is an example of some of the uh, questions. So our question is how do plants and animals survive? And the students had to come up with by inventing a species that doesn't exist, but something that has superpowers to help it survive. Um, these are just a few more examples of some essential, essential questions with, which led to the project. So, are rules important? Can we live without rules? The project was a video about following the rules that we showed to other classes. 